<clears throat> okay, welcome folks. Thank you for joining us for this practice tonight. My name is Jill Davey and I'm one of the teachers of True North Insight. Um, is it necessary to, yeah, I'll just um, mention a bit of a lack of energy and uh, um, as I'm just uh, partially into uh, COVID. So um, we're going to start with our sitting tonight and then have a little bit of a theme after that. The only part I'll say um, that's been inspiring me for practice this week in a time when it's difficult to practice, when there's illness and lack of energy and lack of clarity to be able to really focus on something, um, <clears throat> was a quote that came from a, it actually came with a kind of as an inspirational quote from a Rosemary Watola Tromer, a poet that I often refer to and the poem was poem was about Van Gogh, but it it she started the before the poem mentioned this line. Um, <clears throat> Anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough. And this is from George Washington Carver, um, is his name, and I'll say a bit more about him um, at the end. Uh, maybe I'll just. Uh, pop this here because I tend to forget putting these links in uh, for the folks on the Zoom call. So I'll just uh, put it in now so that I don't forget. Um, that's a link to uh, some history about um, this scientist and um, obviously wise man, George Washington Carver. And yeah, so this quote, anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough, has been really helpful and invoking curiosity, which is a very important part of practice, um, and I think has a lot of wisdom in it. And I'll say more about that, that theme um, after the sit. I'd like to just start with a sit tonight. And see what comes from it. So hopefully that will inspire you as well in your practice tonight to bring lots of curiosity um, and love so that you can see things as they truly are. Yeah, so let's uh, begin by adjusting your posture. Hopefully we'll have a little more energy because we're starting with our sit rather than me talking for 20 minutes and then into a sit. So I hope you have uh, <clears throat> enough energy for practice. But as um, you may know, you can also practice standing or walking mindfully um, back and forth. Uh, you can lay down if you're in pain or need support physically or um, sitting upright. <laughs> I'll mute myself occasionally if I start coughing. <clears throat> Not. Hmm. I was listening to a, a monastic teaching today um, and uh, she was saying that, you know, there's nothing in the suttas about needing to close your eyes to practice or, or have your eyes open. There's no instruction about the position of the eyes in the suttas, in the written teachings. And so whatever feels most supportive to your practice tonight, if you're feeling a lot of sleepiness, it can often be helpful to practice with the eyes slightly open, bringing in a little bit of light, keeping us really grounded in present moment awareness often with eyes slightly open. Mm -hmm. 
And some of us find it uh, calming and helps us to turn our attention to the inner landscape, to close our eyes. So see what is helpful for you. If your nervous system feels really agitated or um, dysregulated, you might find it helpful to look out a window or look at something beautiful in your space. Or looking around your room. And similarly to seeing what your system needs in terms of the position of your eyes, we've also opened up choices and possibilities within our posture. As I already mentioned, standing, reclining, sitting, walking. It is helpful to just choose one though and then let that settle in for the remainder of the practice so that we're not constantly chasing uh, something more pleasant. And so as you're finding the posture for your body and the position for your eyes, that suits your energy, your nervous system, uh, your state of heart and mind tonight, then you can begin just to meet and land here with yourself. Smoothing and relaxing your forehead. Calming your expression. Feeling the weight of the shoulder bones, lengthening and relaxing the neck. Letting go of holding in the hands, finding a posture of being at ease and receptive. Letting go. And then feeling into the area of the torso. Any tension here that isn't needed right now that could soften a little bit, even if it's just a few degrees or a small percentage. Can any of the inner layers of the belly soften? This is an area that I find I have to revisit over and over as the nervous system subconsciously is triggered or activated. And softening the belly helps calm the whole vagus nerve and the heart, mind, body. So as stillness and softening are invited, we may now begin to feel more groundedness, presence, rootedness. And 
let yourself know and directly experience the sensations of pressure, contact, texture, temperature, weightedness. Let's just take a few more moments of silence here, relaxing and landing into the present moment. And for many of us, it's helpful to choose an anchor for our practice. So again, depending on how you are in this moment, that may help um, condition what anchor you choose. So if you feel like you need some more stability or drawing your, anchoring your attention, you might choose um, an anchor like the breath. But if your system feels already too tight, you might choose a a bit of a wider focus like hearing or just feeling a full body sitting. And see if you can let go of any struggle or confusion about choosing an anchor and just trust what is first arising for you what feels most natural, comfortable, accessible. And then just stay with that anchor for the remainder of the practice. Or when we return to the anchor, return to that one. And now that you've chosen your anchor, let's bring in this inspiration from this quote tonight. Anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough. What does it mean to love this? It means paying attention. Deep, curious, non judgmental attention. So, with your anchor, can you notice its changing nature?
arising and passing. Whether our anchor is the breath, sounds, or bodily sensations, really directly knowing the arising and passing. Staying awake to each moment. And with this impermanence being directly known, we also have access to directly know that it is all conditioned by infinite variables, our conditioning, these sensations, these sounds, this breath this state of mind just stay present and curious like the like a scientist with a kind heart
directly seeing and knowing that all things are impermanent and conditioned. We can also see that there's nothing to hold on to or push away, nothing to get or get rid of it. Just stay curious. If there's a lot of sleepiness or restlessness, planning or worrying, rather than trying to wrestle with those, push them away, get rid of it, fix it, turn the curiosity toward it. See that it too is impermanent, unreliable, conditioned, it's not who you are. See its nature. And let it be its nature, arising and passing, and begin again with your anchor.
If there is a lot of planning or worrying or sleepiness, restlessness, doubt. In a few moments when I ring the bell, see if you can notice what happens to those things. Where do they go? Thank you all for your practice. So that was a 25 minute practice for those that like to kind of keep a practice journal. Um, you can note that. <clears throat> mm, so here in the um, Zoom room, I'm also pasting a, which I think, I don't know, the, this, this shorter one that I started with is more often, is um, been cited a few times, but when I researched it, this longer quote is what, uh, what I actually found. So I'm not sure, maybe he said both. So the, <laughs> anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough was short and pithy and helpful to me this week <clears throat> uh, but uh, it, it goes on to say not only have I found he went on to say not only have I found that when I talk to the little flower or the little peanut they will give up their secrets but I have found that so not only that, but I have found that when I silently commune with people, they give up their secrets also, if you love them enough. And um, so this man, George Washington Carver, I did put a link to a history page about him above, and that will be down below in the YouTube uh, recording as well. Um, he was an agricultural scientist, hence the reference to the little flower or the little peanut. And he actually invented like hundreds of recipes. They, he was trying to um, get people to rotate crops and um, for the health of the farms and um, et cetera. So he was uh, born into slavery on a farm in Missouri in 1864. His actual birth date isn't recorded, but they think it was 1864. <clears throat> and by 1894, he became the first African-American to earn a Bachelor of Science degree. Um, <clears throat> and so encouragement to read a bit more about his history and how that how he um, how that came to be and what a remarkable man he was. And um, but I love this, uh, this thing about silently communing with people reminds me also of the Brahma Vihara practice, the loving kindness practice, metta, we sometimes call it, or benevolence or friendliness meditation. And these meditations... I, I think that's a helpful description of them, silently communing with 
others and with ourselves. Just now in our practice, we were silently communing with ourselves and with how things actually are in this moment. And hopefully in that way, uh, some of it's, or the secrets were given up as to how things actually are. Yeah, it this silently communing <clears throat> it's a rare and precious gift, isn't it? You know, where we're just opening our heart into presence with ourselves, with our world, with the little peanut and little flower, and with each other. And and what do we what what wisdom may be available to us is, isn't there when we're all up in it trying to figure it out and getting on somebody or or tearing ourselves apart trying to figure ourselves out this this kindness um so many of you have heard like yeah if you love it enough so the the word love is mysterious to say the least <laughs> to me <clears throat> and uh, many of you may have heard me often cite uh, from the movie Lady Bird, where um, the character whose name was Lady Bird writes this paper to try to get into college because she's just dying to get out of her hometown. She just thinks it's, she just hates it and can't wait to get out of there. It's Sacramento. And so she writes this paper about her about the town and and then the head nun who's read her paper meets with her and said and the nun says oh it's clear that you love sacramento and lady bird's like what now <laughs> she's trying to recover herself and she goes <laughs> that'll make me cough <clears throat> and uh because she doesn't think she does she's you know and and so Lady Bird says, well, I guess I pay attention. You know, she's really been paying attention as she's writing this paper and all the things that she's noticing. And then the head nun says, well, don't you think they're the same thing, love and attention? And I was like, oh, that's the first time a definition of love made sense to me. It's like when we pay attention to something, it's a kind of love or it is love, whether it's paying attention to the little flower, the little peanut, to myself, to someone else, even if it's silently communing with someone else or, you know, passing someone by on the street. If I pay attention heartfully, non-judgmentally, it feels like love to me. And uh, so that's the, the version of love that has been making sense to me in, in this quote of anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough, meaning if you pay attention in a kind hearted, non judgmental way. So, what are the secrets of what we pay attention to? You know, we through the guiding of the meditation. I certainly dropped a few hints <laughs> of um, noticing the secrets, the characteristics of all things, everything, all things, even this mind, even this body, all things are impermanent, beginning, having some existence, changing, passing away. Each breath, each sound, each sensation, each thought, absolutely. <laughs> Even though we think it's so permanent, it's, ah, really pay attention, you will see all things are impermanent. And in their impermanence, we see they're also conditioned by everything else. Infinite variables, infinite factors. So something as simple as these breaths. If a sharp sound happens, the breath is affected. It changes. If an agitating thought stream is flowing through, it affects the breath. 
it's conditioned by that. If if the if there's COVID in the lungs, it's certainly conditioned by that. I mean, we can the infinite things of how each breath is a unique breath in a different body. The body is already changed, affected by whatever is happening in the environment and in the mind and in the heart. And we could take this and look closely at it with anything. That's just the example of the breath. So when we see that everything is interdependent with everything else, we see that we are not a separate, isolated entity that is just me and mine living my life. <laughs> <clears throat> There is no separate, permanent, unconditioned self. This being that I call me and mine is constantly in flux and change and is not the same being that was yesterday or this morning and certainly not the same one uh, it was in 1961 when it uh, separated from my mother's body and <clears throat> this so these characteristics are liberating insights liberating things to see clearly they free us from holding on to falsehoods holding on to things that cause more suffering so that is the other characteristic of all things. All things are impermanent, interconnected, and thus unreliable. There's nothing to hold on to or to get rid of um, because it's all changing. And it's all mostly beyond our control. Sorry to say it. It's true. <laughs> And so we see that it's unreliable. It's a source of suffering to try to control these things that are not controllable. <clears throat> so these are some of the, these are the main secrets of all things or anything, as George said. Oh, I shouldn't call him George. That sounds kind of flippant. George Washington Carver, George. <laughs> and um, And we should practice and look this way every day, all the time, if we want to be free of suffering. They're liberating insights. It's not just interesting. It is interesting, but it's not just interesting. It's freeing, frees us from suffering, from stress, from anxiety, from worry, vexation. To see, oh, it's conditioned, it's impermanent, it's not who I am. There's nothing to get rid of or to hold on to. When I say there's nothing to get rid of, that doesn't mean we don't also need to take action in our world and be involved and be working towards freeing ourselves and others from suffering. So I don't mean that, you know, we're just going to sit back in our armchair and say, oh, well, it's all gone to whatever and nothing we can do about it that doesn't mean that it means to see clearly with wisdom so that we know what is the right action the right speech the right response not coming from reactivity but from wisdom and clarity and speaking of wisdom and clarity i think that 
just tapped out about all I have available tonight. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'll put the links to the quotes and and uh, to George Washington Carver, a little bit of his history and bio to uh, read a bit more and write down the quote and reflect on it and um, encouragement to work with it, to uh, silently commune with yourself and with others and with our world and in a way that's loving and curious and see what secrets it will give up. Yeah, thank you for uh, joining us on the YouTube practice. And uh, for those here on the Zoom, you can stay if you like or, or not. Thank you.